What's up everybody? I'm Alex. I'm Marco. And you're watching Vaga Brothers. And this week we're exploring German tradition in Bavaria. So grab your lederhosen and pretzel. Mm. Germany is a nation made up of many historic regions, and Bavaria is the largest and most culturally distinct of all. Historically wedged between the Prussians in the north and the Austro-Hungarian Empire in the south, Bavarians developed a strong cultural identity that endures to this day. Bavaria has been dubbed the Texas of Germany for its strong regional pride and because it's where foreigners get a lot of their preconceptions about Germany. Oktoberfest, Lederhosen, and huge mugs of beer. We wanted to find out just how real these images were, so we started off at one of Bavaria's most iconic landmarks, the Hofbrauhaus in Munich. Uh, we came here as 18-year-old backpackers, but quite frankly don't remember too much. That's probably because they serve beer by the leader. It is full of tourists, but that's for a reason. It's a really traditional place, it's popular, and uh, we're going to go in and learn about the culture of beer halls in Bavaria. Prost! Mm, no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes, yes, Prost. Yes. <laughs> At first glance, things can look a little bit cliche. Dudes in Lederhosen playing oompa music, yeah, that's a thing. And Frauleins serving huge one-liter beers, called Masses, to tourists arriving by the busload. But look a little closer and you'll find what makes the Hofbrauhaus so popular. It's long legacy as the royal brewery of Bavaria's kings and the hundreds of locals who come every week dressed in Lederhosen, drinking from personal mugs that they keep in a locker. You might think that they're actors in costume, but they aren't. They're legit and super friendly, like our new buddy Charlie. My name is Charlie. Charlie told us that he first came to the Hopper House when he was 11, and that our table actually belongs to his Stammtisch, or group of childhood friends that come there every week to catch up, drink beers, and have a good old time. Prost! Prost! On chess! I guess you could say that the Hofbrauhaus House is a lot like Paris. Full of tourists, but super fun if you hang out with the locals. But most of the locals there were older, so we went across town to the student neighborhood of Max Vorstadt to meet up with travel and lifestyle blogger Annika Landsteiner at Cafe Cosmos, a cocktail bar with a much younger vibe. I like it here because it's very authentic, very old. It's very cheap, actually. The beer is around 160 or something like that. You can't find another place that is as cheap but as good as Cafe Cosmos. Cafe Cosmos actually made headlines a few years back for banning people who wore Lederhosen. So we asked Annika how young people were relating to their cultural heritage these days. Bavaria is a place with a lot of tradition, a lot of old style. Um, and the people are, especially the young people, are starting to like that again. For example, there are a lot of bands that um, are again singing in the in the dialects and everything. They use the dialects. And they are kind of identifying with the tradition again. But the next morning, we saw locals wearing a totally different type of outfit we didn't expect to see in Germany. A wetsuit. Bro, I want to get in there so badly. The water is freezing. But these guys are having a blast and you know it's awesome to see people here in the middle of continental Europe with some surf stoke. I'm jealous but I'm gonna watch these guys have fun and then I'll get my surf stoke too. Now as much as Marco and I like to ride surfboards, there's one thing we like to ride even more, motorcycles. So before we left Munich, we paid homage at BMW Welt, home to some of the world's most amazing machines. This is like the ultimate Vaga Brothers dream. I believe it's ultimate driving experience, Alex. I want an R1200 or an 800 GS Adventure to do some serious like motorcycle trips on. Okay, so Alex likes the enduro bike for off-road stuff and that would be cool, but I'm more of a cafe racer person myself. And this is the BMW R9T, which is their version of doing a cafe racer. It's customizable and it's just gorgeous. Look at this thing, look at this thing. We actually got to take a spin in some other rides as well, from the classic to BMW's latest electric car, the i3. But Bavaria is about a lot more than just Munich, so the next morning we woke up early and headed to the countryside. Alright you guys, well our exploration of Bavaria continues. We've driven about an hour south of Munich through beautiful rolling hills and forests and now we're in the monastery town of Andex. Not only is Andex beautiful, but we're here because it's also where monks have been brewing beer for centuries. So we're gonna go find out a bit more about this tradition and maybe we can sample 
a little bit of their products ourselves. What do you think, brother? I'm excited, let's go. Since the middle of the 12th century, pilgrims come here, and that's why the monks are here, that's why a brewery exists and, and uh, our restaurant. So I'd like you to know the, the very heart of our mix. He then took us into the inner sanctum, which guards holy relics such as parts of Jesus' cross. But many people make the pilgrimage to Andex simply for the beer. So we asked how a monastery became a world-class brewery. It was at the beginning monks brewed beer for themselves. And they started brewing also for their, for their guests because Benedictine monks also are very sure that if they face visitors, they face Christ himself. So they would know that if Christ were here, he would want to have a nice dark beer and a pretzel and some, some uh, pork belly as well, right? <laughs> and we would like to join him, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so we've seen the, the monastery, we've learned about the religious significance, and now we're going to experience true Benedictine hospitality. We're sitting down for lunch and some beers in this beautiful beer hall. To Bavaria. Guys, this is a ridiculous feast right now. Pork belly, pork knuckle, potatoes, pretzel, beer, and a heart attack. What a good one. I was once told a German phrase that means you get so full that you have to unbutton your pants so let your belly flop out. And that's exactly how it felt. I don't remember the phrase, but if you do, add it in the comment box because I'd love to know it. We staved off food coma with momentum, hopping on a train south to the Bavarian mountain town of Berchtesgaden. It's often said that Bavarians are more culturally similar to Austrians than Northern Germans. And walking around Berchtesgaden, which used to be part of Austria, illustrated that point. We checked into the luxurious hotel and spa Edelweiss Berchtesgaden before heading off to explore the town, the surrounding mountains, and the beautiful Konigsee Lake. Dude playing a, a trumpet, listen. Awesome. Couldn't have planned that if we wanted to. Next, our guide recommended that we try one of the local sports. So we were told that we were going to an ice skating rink, but this does not look like an ice skating rink. It looks like a bobsled. If that's the case, we're going to be like the California bobsled team, which is just on par with the Jamaicans. I watched the Olympics a couple of years ago, and a guy who did what we were about to do flipped off and slammed into a pole and was dead instantly. It feels like getting shoved into a torpedo bay and then <laughs> shot out into the unknown. <laughs> I guess we can take solace in the fact that there are elderly people and children doing this, so. The luge was fun, but we also wanted to experience classic Bavarian style, the Lederhosen. So we met up with Ingelbert Agne, the youngest generation in one of the last families produce Lederhosen by hand. Engelbert invited us into his workshop where he makes clothes from deerskin, each piece embroidered in the individual style of Bavaria and Austria's many different regions. Over a beer, he told us why Lederhosen are so important to Bavarians. It's the same like the kilt from the Scottish guys and it's more a feeling. The last years, um, the young guys uh, wear Lederhosen more and more. It's not because our grandpas did it, it's a lifestyle, not a... The beers taste better when you're wearing Lederhosen? Much better. <laughs> <laughs> We'd seen a lot of Bavaria, so on our last day we decided to take it all in from the mountains, above the resort town of Bad Reichenhall. Guten Morgen from the top of the Predigtstuhl. We just took one of the oldest gondolas in the world up here and we're about to go snowshoeing through this beautiful snowy mountain. We hiked on a ridge line overlooking the border with Austria. It was the perfect spot to reflect on our awesome time in Bavaria. And although we couldn't see the physical border of Bavaria, we realized Bavaria is a region that's defined more by sentiment, a feeling that sticks with you long after you've left. All right, guys, that was our take on Bavaria. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and make sure you come check out Bavaria for yourself. Big thanks to the German Tourism Board for helping make this trip possible. Uh, if you want to learn more about Bavaria, you can check out their website down below. And stay tuned for next week when we're going to the Rhineland 
for Carnival. Oh yeah. As always, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to this channel for new travel videos every Tuesday. Okay, ciao, ciao. Goodbye. Mark's putting the GoPro on like a G-string. <laughs> <laughs> Things we Things do to get those. the camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> I feel like a medieval prisoner. I didn't do it, I swear. Free me. I don't deserve to die. Why are you always Scottish? Dude? I don't know, but... <laughs>